Today we're talking about paper and why paper is something you have to consider for fountain pens. If you use your average fountain pen on the wrong paper, you'll get a feathery blobby mess that looks terrible. Most of the problems stem from the fact that fountain pens deliver much more liquid onto the page compared to ball type pens. Most modern paper wasn't engineered to deal with that amount of liquid, so you get the typical problems we see. Uh, the ink we use in fountain pens is different than what you find in most everyday pens. It's much less concentrated. F fountain pen ink is composed mainly of water with a relatively low concentration of a pigment or dye that give it the color or the properties that we're looking for. The paper that's made today is generally not made to be compatible with fountain pens. It's made to work well with laser or ink printers or ballpoints, pencils, things like that. Fountain pens are the odd man out. I don't want to turn this video into a documentary, but the written word in its substrate is pretty cool stuff. The history of it is really pretty interesting, and two of my favorite books on the subject are The Library, A World History, and The Book by Keith Houston. Uh, the first one is pretty expensive, so maybe check to see if your local library has a copy. It also feels more appropriate to get a book about the library from the library. The paper and pens that we use today are the result of the forces of economics, technology, culture, and agriculture over the course of centuries. There's a relationship between the surface on which we write or print and what is used to do said writing and printing. It sounds obvious or almost meaningless when you say it, but it's one of the things that catches people off guard when they're new to the hobby. Fountain pens are from a different time, and the type of paper that people use every day has changed since that time when fountain pens were common. Most paper will work if you take steps to reduce the amount of ink going into the paper. You can do this by using a finer and drier nib or using an ink that is made to work on highly absorbent paper like Noodler's X Feather. But there's some paper that a fountain pen is never going to work on, uh, non-absorbent or glossy paper or something like this special waterproof paper. Uh, gel and rollerball don't work either. It's ballpoint, pencil, or Sharpie only. Once you know that your paper is going to work for your ink, now we get to the second most important thing, and it seems boring, but trust me, it's not. That's paper size. In the U.S. where I'm based, we don't have many standard options. We've got letter and legal, which are basically big and also big, just taller. We have a bunch of other paper sizes, but nothing really standard. But outside of the U.S., there's another standard that defines quite a few different papers, and more importantly, you can actually buy papers in these different standards and know that they're going to work wherever you need to use them. The closest thing to a U.S. letter size is called A4. A4 is slightly less wide and slightly taller than U.S. letter. The next most common size of these A papers is A5, and A5 is literally half the size of A4. If you just fold an A4 sheet in half, you will get a sheet of A5. A similar standard defines the B series of papers, and the B5 falls right in between the A4 and A5. These three sizes are the ones that I use most frequently, but there are some more in common use. A5 seems to be the most popular size. It's excellent for a journal or portable notebook. It strikes a nice balance between being portable enough while also giving enough room for your thoughts. Uh, I find that a blank sheet of A5 is also less intimidating to look at than a big sheet of A4. When most people think what color paper is, white is what comes to mind. But it's also possible to get whitish paper sometimes, referred to as cream or ivory. It'll still be categorized as white paper, and it can be hard to know what you're getting if you're buying online. 
Uh, I prefer pure white paper because I can see the ink color more clearly. Uh, but, you know, some people like that ivory or cream paper. You just need to be sure that you know what you're getting. Here's an example. I've got three different papers here, uh, Midori, uh, Kokuyo Campus, and the popular journal Leuchtturm. I think I've messed that up terribly, but uh, it's a popular notebook. Now I'm going to give my personal recommendations. My favorite vendor for just about everything stationary related is Jet Pens. Not only do they have pretty much the best selection of items that I've found, their website is extremely well designed so that it's easy to find the things that you're looking for. For example, when you select white paper, there's an additional selector you can then use to filter by white or ivory to get the specific shade that you're looking for. As far as notebooks go, I like a hardback A5 notebook uh, with lined white paper. I like hardback because my A5 notebooks usually travel with me and I find the extra durability comes in handy. Uh, the brand that I've used for a long time isn't available any longer. Uh, if you're more gentle than I am, you could save some money by getting a soft cover. Uh, Rhodia's lined of staple bound pads are quite good. But the lion's share of my writing is done on loose leaf that goes into a binder. Uh, I almost exclusively use Kyoko campus paper and binders in various sizes and ruling. Uh, but my go-to is this lined B5 paper. A5 is a bit too small and A4 a bit too large for my style of note taking. So B5 is kind of the Goldilocks zone for me. Uh, they sell small and large binders in various colors and materials. Uh, most of the time though, it's just these slim binders that I end up using. I fell into this style of note taking during college. Uh, each class got its own separate three ring binder. Uh, at the time, the earliest of the 2000s, I was limited to what I could find at the office supply store, and I'd settled on a bright yellow legal pad type pad, but in US letter size, that was cheap and fountain pen friendly. Uh, I'd bring that pad and the slim binders to whatever classes I had that day. Uh, then every couple days, I'd tear off the sheets from the pad, punch holes in them, and store them in the binders. Uh, notes would get consolidated into larger binders at the end of each semester, i.e. all my math together, all my computer science together, etc. Even though school is a long time behind me, I still do something similar for the things that I'm learning. Uh, the slim binders sit at my desk, and every few weeks I'll consolidate pages into a larger binder that sits on the shelf. If your paper doesn't have binder holes, you can add your own with a hole punch. The A5 one is pretty easy to find and isn't too expensive. The A4 one is harder to find and significantly more expensive. And you'll notice I didn't mention what I use for journaling. Uh, I've kept a regular journal since about 2004, and I did use notebooks for many years, up until about 2018. Uh, but at that point, I switched over to a digital journal using an app called Day One, and I have physical copies printed out at the beginning of each year with the entire previous year's contents. I prefer digital for three reasons. Uh, the first is that it's easy for me to include photos on my entries. Like when I would go back and look through my photos, I like on their own, I would find memories and things that I wanted to recall, but my journal never captured that. It was just textual. Uh, and day one makes it really easy to put photos in there. Uh, the second is that I find that I use it more when there's no real ceremony, the app is just there on my phone or uh, on my computer, or just on the internet, actually. They, they released a web app recently. I just, I write more journal entries when I do it digitally than on paper. Uh, and the third is that I tend to edit my entries as I'm writing them, as my thoughts come to me, things get clarified, and then I go back and I, I rework it. So yeah, that's all I have to say about paper today. There's a lot more that can be said on this topic, but I think the most important thing really is to figure out what you want to write and to pick a type and size of paper that helps you accomplish that. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.